Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. I'm jumping all over the place on my tutorials, but you know what? Um, most of the ones that I'm making are for specific people, for specific items. So, what I'm going to do in this video, this is a brand new, fresh project. No starter content, third person template. And what I'm going to do is, what I usually do, is I dump this spinning icon and the third person written on the floor down there. And I go ahead and I get rid of the character on the ground and do a quick save. Alright, got a blank canvas here to work with. And what I'm going to do is, <coughs> excuse me, cough and sound totally unprofessional on the video. But then after that, <coughs> what we're going to do, since we already have a player start here, is we're going to take a look at... We're going to set third person game mode and we're going to hit play. So, what we've got is the usual third person character, third person animations. But what I want to do is do a simple system to where we can retarget between armed and unarmed, which, you know, that's fine. We've got um, unarmed by using this right here. And if you're not already set up with uh, the marketplace and running the animation starter pack, the animation starter pack is free. So all I have to do is go there, download it, add it to your project, and just that easy and you've added another set of animations. However, the one thing I don't like about it is when you do install it, it gives you all the animations you need for a rifle, a pistol, shotgun, prone, crouching, and all this kind of cool stuff. It also gives you the blend spaces and it also gives you the animation blueprint that you're going to need and a character to actually use it on. And what we can do really quickly here is we're going to change over to this character since you know we're currently set up to run off of this being our unarmed character, which that's lovely. So that's good. So we're going to come over to the world settings, third person game mode, selected game mode. We're going to come down to default pawn class and we're actually going to change that over to the UE4 ASP character. And now we'll hit play. For some reason it's showing the capsule collision there. Moving a little slower. And you can't see, you can't pan around it to see it directly in front of you. So there's some issues with all this and not particularly happy with that. So if we open up the character and see what's going on with that, you've got the, the use yaw control. The one thing I will probably salvage from this is the jump section. And the reason why is there is no key associated with input action crouch. So what we can do is come to editor, project settings, input and action mapping. We already have jump so what we need to do is hit the plus. We need to call this crouch and let's make sure that that's what it is right here. Crouch and let's go ahead and set up the keyboard C key for that. That sounds lovely to me. And now we'll hit compile and save again. That fixes that issue. Um, we're going to end up pulling those two items from here and putting it into the other character. But it's just one of those things that we're going to have to do one thing at a time. So now if we go into it, we're still seeing the capsule collision, but we hit C, we can now crouch. And we still have the jump. So with the um, that capsule, uh, I've never actually had that problem before. Click on Hidden in Game. There we go. 
and now it is hidden. So you've got a little bit different gravity here and a lower jump. You don't have that super high jump of the regular character. So what if you want to add a combination of both of them? So I've already got my UE4 ASP character up. I'm going to go ahead and go to my third person character, go to that blueprint. All right, so it's got jump associated with it right here. The jump from the animation starter pack is totally different. And what's happening with it is when she, this is the same basic setup for jump right here, but it's added in a character movement component and it's also changing your velocity. It's setting your jump velocity to 400. Not totally sure I'm a fan with that, but the crouching is a nice thing to have. So I'm going to grab the crouching. And now keep in mind, there is a, a variable that's sitting right here. And there's an easy way to take care of that. Let's, um, sorry, I, I, I'm very, very much into the OCDs things here. So control V. Now you notice we don't have that variable. So watch what happens when we do compile and save. Oh no, oh no, we got an error. Well, all I got to do is right click on it and create variable. There we go. Problem solved on that. Now I'm going to go back into the world settings. I'm going to go back to my. Where are you? My. Well, I'm going to change my default pawn over to the third person character. I don't use third person character very much, so I usually create my own and, and go from there. But what's going to happen now is we don't have the animation blueprint set up for crouching. So we won't be able to crouch right now while we're actually in this complete setup. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up another a temporary key binding. And what we can do is I, I generally come in and I create a um, in the project settings input. I usually create a, a, a debug key. And we're going to do a plus here. We're going to call this. debug and I'm going to go ahead and select this on the keyboard as the delete key. I use this for a lot of different things and it's great for just testing out something short term. So now if we come in here and type in debug we should be able to find the um, the action event debug right here. So what we're going to do is just going to come over here to an empty spot. And what we want to do is run a flip-flop. And again, this is primarily for testing. So what we're going to do is when we press the key the first time, it's going to we're going to set animation instance for our mesh and the new class is going to be uh, UE4 ASP what was it's actually it's going to be using hero So you can just type in hero and it'll show you that okay there it is so now when we hit the key the first time it's going to set our animation instance to use that and then whatever we do it again then we want to I'm just typing in instance and then selecting set animation instance class mesh and then on this one we want to set it back to the um, the standard and the standard UE4 mannequin is using for its animation 
the third person and MB, IBP. So we can just come to right here, start typing in third person, and there we go. So in theory, as long as I didn't screw this up, whenever we hit the delete key now, now you see it, it totally made an ass out of me. But it's awesome though, isn't it? Now, this is where the fun part comes in. Both the Animation Starter Pack and the UE4 Mannequin use a the exact same skeleton called the exact same thing. And since there's two of them, one uses one, one uses the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take since there's all of these animations are bound to this skeleton, this UE4 mannequin, um, there's a couple ways to do this, but the short way is if I come in here, there's only this many, so there's a lot less. So if I select all of these, it won't let me do it, but if I select all of those except for the animation blueprint. but Let's start with the animation blueprint, and what I want to do is, when you find the skeleton, it's going to come right here to the mesh folder. So we know what it what it is. You can retarget and in blueprint, and you'll see nothing is listed there. So the easy way to do this is actually to come to your your mesh, go to your UE4 mannequin skeleton. Retarget Manager. If you don't have that tab there, then just hit right there, the Retarget Manager. You want to select Humanoid Rig and hit Save. Now, in other videos I've made changes to the character. You don't have to because this guy is already using the Y pose, and both of them are going to be using the same Y pose. So if I come in here to the Animation Starter Pack, U84 mannequin mesh. Come in here, do the same thing. Select humanoid rig. Hit save. And now both of them are going to be shared that way. So I can come into this animation folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, retarget animations, duplicate animation blueprints, and retarget. And now I can select the one that's available. There's only one available here. And I'm going to keep everything the same for now. Well, actually, let's go ahead and change this. We want to change it from the third person so we don't confuse it with the other one. So where it says replace here on the new asset name, I'm going to type in third person, exactly how it is in the animation blueprint. I'm going to hit the tab key so I can go to the replace it with and I'm going to say um, ASP underscore unarmed sounds good to me and then I'm going to click on change I'm going to select the animation starter pack and that's fine right there and then I'm going to select retarget it's now going to retarget all the animations from there and place them in with the other ones that are here. So now we have a new animation blueprint called ASP Unarmed Anim Blueprint. So we can go ahead and hit Save All, get all that tied together. And now, in here, if we look at our viewport, our mesh, we want to first off change the skeletal mesh to the one that is in the animation starter pack. See that puts him back into a T pose or a Y pose in this case and then in the animation class I'm going to select the ASP unarmed BP. Compile, save, then go back to my event graph and we're going to type in ASP and we're going to assign that new ASP unarmed animation blueprint to here. Hit compile, save, and now when we play, we're going to walk around just fine. We hit the delete key, 
and look we actually can still pan around here now the jump animation is wrong and there's a, a, a very easy way to fix that um, if you were to go back into your hero TPP animation blueprint come into here and this is default I haven't changed anything this is exactly how it is whenever I grab the, uh, the thing from the marketplace what it's trying to do is from right here and right here it is trying to cast to that hero character and we don't want it to cast to there we want to cast to third person character because that's what we're using so we need to look at what's connected and where so we know that as our person character it's probably best that we go ahead and do um, our own jump button down but you see we don't have that one so we need to go back into our hero character jump button down and I'm gonna go ahead and quickly grab this control C and thank you we don't need you anymore and back into our third person character we need to add a variable control V and alright we're good compile save and then we can come back into here and we'll go ahead and as third person character jump button down so we want to set jump button down just like it did on that one we want to come from enable jump to here we want to come from try get pawn owner down to here and just copy it exactly how it is there now all we have to do is grab these two and I'm just control left clicking and boom delete just neaten it up because yeah well because and that's got that part done for jumping and the next part is jump button down crouch button down so I want to go ahead and I'm just gonna move this one out of the way and we can actually come over here control C control V on the third person character we need to go ahead and drag off of the try get pawn owner and attach that there we're coming from the set here on the set direction we'll tie that in there and then what we're gonna have to do is we need to get jump button down and crouch button down so I'm gonna go ahead and grab those I want to throw these up, that up there so we want to get jump button down and we want to get crouch button down now pay attention to where they're linking to the crouch button down goes to there to set crouching jump button down comes over to here now we can see that this goes to the sequence so I need to come up to the sequence there and now I can select this and select these two guys and delete them so now we should have everything pretty much in place so that it'll work as normal so I'm gonna hit compile and save I'm gonna go ahead and close both of these down for now and let's hit play so our regular jump still works a regular unarmed animation still works as normal hit the delete key and now we are in an armed we're at a low ready and jump is still kind of eh. it's not working but it'll take a little tweaking to to get it all right make sure we didn't miss anything here So we're going to cast a third person character in both places there. Um, when you're trying to modify 
two different um, animation blueprints to work with each other. You see in your animation blueprint in the, uh, the anim graph, the jump is right here. Play jump from stand. And what's happening is you've got a, a jump loop animation. This is a different jump than what is in the original mannequin. So if you were to look right here, third person anim blueprint, I guess we could have gone to our other one. Go into our, you see you have jump start, jump loop, and jump end. So in theory, we could grab all of this and make it all work. Just depends on, on how much effort you want to put into your jump. I mean, if you wanted to use the same jump that you were using before with the um, the animation starter pack, which I didn't like it because it, it limited how much you could jump. But if you wanted to, you could easily just grab that stuff over. And... You want to come down to your hero character, and you can grab all of this stuff right here. So, entirely up to you on how you want to do your jumps. I would probably spend a few extra minutes trying to do a um, a, a fix to where you actually tie in the, the normal jump, because I think this is a little bit nicer overall. You could like the other one. I, it's entirely up to you. You have freedom to move around, plus you can change your view. You got more control whenever you're in this type of jump. The other one, it was just a low jump. So, alright. We'll leave that up to you, but that's how we can quickly transition between the two. Now, where this will come in handy is if you're, you've got your weapon stored and you want to draw your weapon out, it, you can tell it to automatically change over to this animation instance. And then if you right click, you can actually create another animation blueprint to have it to where the weapon is up to aiming mode. And you can set up an aim camera and everything else. So being able to switch between animation modes like that, all from inside the uh, third person character blueprint, comes in handy. And all it was, was to add the set animation instance class. And that's it. And, you know, if you've got different weapons, you can select your visibility, add them in. There's all different ways of doing that, but hopefully you found this helpful and got you at least running with that. All right, I'm going to call this video for now, and I'm going to go ahead and start getting set up to run another video, which I'm going to import a and make a few CC character and import it into Mixamo to rig it and bring it in here and I'm actually going to go ahead and give it these same animations. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.